Hello, everybody, and welcome to Grey Goo, best name 2015. No, no, I'm just kidding. In all seriousness, though, welcome to Grey Goo. Now, for full transparency's sake, this is a brand deal that I got through Polaris. I actually discussed this a few weeks ago on my Friday rap series. And uh, this is the one I was saying I was going to be covering one way or another, and I was lucky enough to actually get a uh, an opportunity to cover it through Polaris. Uh, they actually approached, hey, you know, we got this uh, brand opportunity for you. Do you want to play this game for a couple of uh, episodes and take a look at it? You're welcome to give your full opinion on the game as it is. And uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to look at it anyway. There's a couple of reasons why I was excited for this game. One, I'm a huge RTS fan. I've always have been. If you know my uh, history coming up into YouTube, I spent a solid year, year and a half trying to do professional casting for StarCraft II. I was really deep into the esports scene. I still am, but on a more passive level. Uh, and two, it's by Petroglyph. Now, when I first heard about Petroglyph, the name rung a bell. It didn't really click with me what they did, but eventually I looked them up and I said, Petroglyph, I know that name. Oh, crap. They did Star Wars Empire at War and Universe at War. Some of my favorite RTSs growing up, particularly Star Wars Empire at War, the number of times I played that game, uh, probably count higher than I can. Um, and they, they have a kind of a pedigree for really good RTSs or RTSs that I have a lot of fun with. Grey Goo is their new original IP that they're bringing to Steam and the PC users, and I've put approximately three or so hours into it, uh, mostly playing skirmishes just to get a feel for the races. I played a couple of missions, and um, I'm going to do just the opening missions of the game for a number of reasons. One, I want to show you the story, at least the opening parts of the story, because in my opinion, it's actually really good. Uh, and two, it, it's probably the best way to describe how this game works, the mechanics of this RTS, and uh, just to show off the game. Uh, in full. So let's go ahead and click campaign. We'll jump into the very first mission, Hunter's Valley. We will play the intro, we will begin the mission, and then we'll play the outro. So let's go ahead. Okay, and that's the introduction. So you kind of have this idea of these things coming through what seems to be a wormhole of some sort, and they're attacking. We're kind of on the back foot on this, so we're going to go ahead and begin the mission. And I'm going to discuss a little bit about the mechanics, because uh, one of the big things... Oh, I can skip this, actually, by hitting begin mission. Um, actually, there's an incoming transmission. Let me have this go through first. I forgot there's a little bit of audio prior. Alert. I'm at Hunter's Valley with eight other survivors from the Proving Grounds. No major injuries. Alert. Sarok, I'm glad you're okay. Word of the attack has reached the keep. Some of the settlements in the lowlands can't be reached. Communications are a mess. Baz Barker is at Magsky and marshalling crews to board your position, but I have yet to get him on the comms. In the meantime, establish a headquarters in Hunter's Valley. Sarok, are we ready for this? Oh, I'm getting a signal from Barker. Stand by. 
Okay, let's head into the battlefield. So, uh, one of the things I will say that I wasn't a huge fan of, uh, in the opening cutscene, I really enjoyed the alien language and the captions underneath and just kind of like letting the alien sound, well, alien and uh, foreign mysterious. Uh, and then they kind of replace it with English accents, not English accents, the English language. Language. One guy's Australian, the other one seems to be something else. It's really weird and kind of jarring from the opening cutscene to that. I really wish they had stuck with the alien language and, or at least had the option to stick with the alien language or go with uh, the dubbed stuff, but it is what it is. I like the facial animations. I think the graphics are really nice. Game is, the game is really pretty. It's very bright and colorful. Sure, and the maps I've seen so far, the ones that I've played are pretty varying. Let's pop this open. So, the main thing I'm going to be just talking about is how the game plays as somebody who's played a lot of RTSs in his time, what feels natural, what doesn't feel natural. Uh, and for the most part, you know, a lot of it, a lot of what I, when I played and I even went and I played a race that I haven't even been introduced to. Can, can you be quiet, lady? I don't care about the story right now. I want to talk about the gameplay. All right, let's let her chat away. Let's get this base operational. Yeah, typical, typical stuff. So, as I was saying, you know, um, a lot of the the gameplay elements that you know aren't introduced right away in the campaign through other races, I was able to easily figure out playing skirmishes coming from somebody who's played this before. So we're going to get a base operation. We're going to talk a little bit about the gameplay elements here. Uh, something you might notice is a little bit different than a lot of other uh, RTSs is actually all your major tabs are going to be right here in a QWERT situation. So if you want to open your structures tab, you hit Q. Light uh, units are going to be, uh, light units are going to be W, and then, you know, as it goes on and on over here. So let's go ahead and open our structures, and we're going to get a refinery going. Um, we're actually going to pop open over here. If we click uh, this right here, resource display, it'll show on the map where all the resources on the map are. There's no th multiple resources. It's all just this one resource here, uh, and it kind of fuels everything. One of the things you'll probably notice is that compared to other M uh, RTSs, the game isn't nearly as uh, micromanagement heavy, uh, or rather macro management heavy, which is uh, kind of balancing multiple resources and your population stuff. It's a lot more micromanagement heavy when it comes to combat and holding choke points. Uh, in fact, a lot of the game is built around building these uh, hubs, which are these right here. There are three different varying hubs. If we take a look over here. You've got, um, well, it'll show it eventually, small, medium, and large hubs, which allow you to build bases, essentially. Uh, the game kind of really revolves around building these hubs into these choke points with these resources and pushing out an attack from those fronts. Uh, again, it's a lot less worrying about uh, having different resources piling up and trying to spend them as much, and more about the, in my opinion, the moment-to-moment -moment action. So, uh, we're going to build this refiner right here. Um, we're going to go ahead and pop open our uh, structure tab, and the next thing we're going to go ahead and build is our factory, which is basically your units thing. So we're going to build this here. A lot of the base building also is kind of attached to these hubs. There's not these large amount of buildings you're going to be building around your base. It's all about building attachments to your main hub, which really kind of forces you to make determinations uh, early on as to what kind of game you want to play. Do you want to play a heavy you know, soldier game? Do you want to play a heavy mech game, heavy air game? Uh, because if you decide to do kind of all of them, you're going to need a lot of different hubs to do that. Where if you decide, hey, I'm going to go heavy mech against this particular opponent because I know they're weak against up. this. Yeah. You need to find room to expand. Yeah, I'm aware. Uh, uh, but yeah, it, it, allowing you to kind of make those decisions. So uh, we're going to go ahead and what I, you can immediately do, what I like to do is I like to hit control one on my unit producing building. That way I can always hit one and uh, click to it and start making it. We're going to go ahead and set a waypoint for our soldiers. And we're going to start building a bunch of regular soldiers. Uh, these are basically your commandos. They're your normal infantry unit. And then w we'll build one stalker, which is an anti-armor unit, kind of a heavier hitter. Uh, you can go ahead and hit rebuild, auto-rebuild unit. So if you just want this to constantly be producing, say, commandos, you can go ahead and tell it to do so. Uh, we're actually going to go ahead and build another factory right on the side over here. And, uh, you know, I'm actually going to have both of them being uh, producing one or the other so i'm gonna have this one constantly producing uh this unit right here so i hit the that button first and then i go ahead and hit that and i'll have it constantly producing commandos well this one will be constantly producing heavy units and we're gonna kind of push out as quickly as we can and they're gonna be moving over so we'll go ahead and pop them Commando ready. it's a little bit annoying that they're coming to push in so early but that's okay we're just gonna have uh this kind of put this here and this will have a rally up over here. We'll make this control two. We'll hit repeat and we're going to have it repeat building these heavy units here. So we're going to have a good mix. 
Done. You know, the early mission, you're not going to have access to a lot of units, but mission two, which we'll be looking at in the next video, will show us a little bit more of the units and the tech upgrade system. This is just a very basic introduction to how the game kind of runs. So let's go ahead and make them our hot group number four. And we can pop over here and keep on building. Uh, if we want, we can actually go ahead and build a silo, but I'm going to try not to float. Actually, you know what? There's actually quite a bit over here. Let's actually build a silo because they're not going to be able to build as much as fast. Uh, to keep up with our demand, we might want to start floating some units instead of floating a bunch of units, rather. Let's build a silo and store it. It might be better for us to spend money on another factory, but I plan on very Tell quickly uh, pushing forward and grabbing another choke point heading toward unit the enemy ready. base. So let's go ahead and uh, pop these, these guys over here. We'll clear out whatever units are over here. So this is actually going to introduce to us another element that is um, not seen in a lot of other RTSs, or at least not an RTS I've played in a long time, and that's kind of cover. Uh, the enemies and you can actually go into brush like this, and unless you send enemies into the brush or have an air unit hovering above the brush, they're invisible to you. So you can kind of set up these ambushes as well as um, kind of run into enemy ambushes at the same time. So that could cause a lot of issues. Let's go ahead and pop over here. Uh, let's go ahead and move this guy back. A little bit of micromanagement. Let's move him over here. Pop him out. Now, since we're going to be pushing over to here, let's go ahead and set our uh, rally point to here. And our rally point to here. Give me the word. And uh, one of the things we're going to be looking at is building a small hub relatively soon once they introduce that to us. So let's go ahead and pop this. So we have a, a strong enough force where we can, uh, I feel confident, pushing forward and try and grab this area over here. So we're going to go ahead and uh, pop down uh, a, a small... Whoop, let's go ahead and grab this guy. I don't know what he's shooting at. Oh, it's a plug, so you can't actually harvest this stuff until you bust this open. Direction so we'll go ahead and blow this up and then we'll pop this. So you're going to run across this every so often. These uh, resources blocked by these plugs essentially. In order to do anything with it you need to actually pop it. So we're going to build a small hub right here. And what this is going to allow us to do, a small hub allows us to have two attachments onto it. Basically this is going to allow us to, uh, we'll go ahead and move these over here allow us to have some more units and again uh, the choke point I was talking about earlier this is a, a good example of that so let's move this up this way and you know obviously the first mission is gonna be pretty easy for anybody who's uh, done this kind of RTS thing before but I like again I like it as an introduction to how the game actually works where are you going dude are you I want you to come over here just in case so there this is done so let's pop some uh, tech attachments down, aka I want to pop down, you know, I'm going to pop down a factory, and I'm going to pop down a refinery. Chances are we're not going to need that much, and in order to actually build a refinery, we're going to need to actually get this a, a vision over here. So the way refineries work, by the way, is you build the refinery, and then it has you put down the extractor, uh, which is free with the refinery. You put down the extractor, it comes down. It gets built, and then you're going to have basically a path uh, that our gatherer is going to go between. So, say I built my small, you know, I built my refinery on this side, it'd be a longer path to and from. You typically want to rotate your small hub a little bit better, put it as close as you can to this area over here, the uh, extracting area, and uh, make it work. Uh, so it has to work less, a shorter path, so to speak. So, we have a, la a rather big army. So, let's start pushing forward a little bit. New direction order. And with this factory, we'll mark it number three, Unit and I'm actually going to go ahead and have Unit it repeat this. Unit under and yeah, there's a little bit of an ambush Watch waiting for us, but we have kind of a large army. So we're going to go ahead and pop these this wall down pretty quickly. I don't expect much of a challenge. I think we have more units than we're ever going to need for the rest of this mission, probably. And uh, even Unit if we don't, we're going to be producing Unit a ton of units, so... Something is shooting me, so let's push on the other side of this wall. There we go. And now we'll just pop these walls down. Nice and easy. This thing's keeping an eye on us. It's acting as a scout. But we have uh, a good chokehold. Let's actually push this down a little bit. Grab all these guys. Let's move up a little bit and take out this. They're not going to have much of a chance in hell. 
Pop this wall down. Not that the wall is that big a deal, but it does allow them some scouting because they're going to be able to see what the wall sees. So let's pop this wall down. So they can't see. And then let's go ahead and uh, move our rally points a little bit further up. And let's push forward. Looks like we're going to be grabbing another... Uh, Maybe we can Another use outpost it. over here, so we'll take care of this. Now, certain units like this one right here actually have ranges. And not that it matters because we have t so many freaking units. Uh, but if you get really close to units that have a, a minimum range... Whoa, that's loud. That was really loud. Alright, so as I was saying, some have minimum ranges. If you get really close, he can't hit certain units if they're way too close. Uh, so you kind of have to pay attention to what units you're fighting. Move really close to some. So let's, actually, this is a, a wall. Yeah, so this is introduced to us the repair mechanic in the game, which you can just go ahead and click repair basically everything that we don't aren't using. Um, and what we're going to do is I'm going to actually jack some of my more injured guys on these walls. You can actually mount units on these things. So, oh, there are actually men on, the, on it already. I wasn't aware. Well, let's go ahead and put him up here, and move him over here because he's fully healed, and he what the other one wasn't. And now we have ourselves a large hub to actually play with. So we're gonna start slapping on new attack attachments. So for instance, let's get a um, a tank attachment on here, and an air attachment. Now is this let's already have a tank attachment here, but let's go ahead and repair it. We'll have two tank attachments. We'll also get ourselves a, a new refinery here and then we'll have him go all the way over there all right, we can actually back up a little bit let's have these guys go here here and here status effect icons we can take a look at that so several different status icons can affect over your buildings or units these icons state problems and how to fix them shown below no extractor place, which is here, which is what they're probably doing that for. Resource cap, blah, blah, blah. So basically just telling you what's going on. If all production is halted, check your drain rate. So we're losing more than we're gaining right now. That's what that drain rate is. Uh, so let's go ahead and get a refinery up Tank attachment here. Complete. Beginning construction. Air attachment complete. We actually need... Oh, that's actually repairing, so we'll be fine. Target. Also, we have a huge attack. army. Going now over here that I wasn't aware of because I am Unit stupid. Unit in Same production. with this. So Extractor that's fine. Complete. Now we are going to eventually get some tech upgrades. But for now I want to get everything in here. So now we have 10 coming in a second. We don't really need to get much else. Unit ready. Unit in production. We're actually gaining 10 now. The other Unit thing too is ready. we were probably spending a lot on repairs. So we can push Unit forward a little bit. All units. This way. This is something we can actually end up selling. Because it gets no power. It's not attached to anything. I don't think we can actually attach it now. So we can actually go ahead and sell this. Just to get rid of it. Let's go ahead and push forward a little bit. He's gonna... There is like... Oh man, he did a lot of damage there. Um, let's actually go ahead and build ourselves a small hub. Right here. Let's actually rotate it by holding left click. Beginning construction. Pop that down. Yes. Let's uh go ahead and keep these guys in here. And again, we just have so many units. And they're gonna constantly be doing that, so. This way. Unit ready. Unit in production. Um we need a factory over here, so let's get a factory up. We can build one here. Constructing. And uh, another Unit one here. Unit in so this is done. He's probably going to end up dying. Let's build a silo. Unit ready. Unit in Not a silo. That was dumb. Beginning construction. Silly, silly me. Uh, we can actually end up canceling this. There it is. Not a silo, Mathis. A refinery, dude. Beginning construction. We'll go ahead and do that. Get some money. Stalker, I want to actually start Unit popping units Stalker, over here. Stalker, right. We can actually go ahead and act. We could probably put another 
refinery there. But at this point, we might as well move forward and start pushing pushing up a bit. Yeah, he's gonna have a turret waiting for us. No problem. This is an anti-heavy sentinel that won't do too much damage to our commandos. And we can pretty much just push in and push in for GG in the win. We kind of held some great che choke, uh, some great checkpoints there, and things worked out nicely for us. Um, and if we want, we can actually start building some predators and tank bursts, uh, which came with building the ability to ta build tanks, the item that we actually had over there. When we built the tank uh, tech base and the air tech base, it was pretty simple for us. Let's actually move up and pop on the hemp heavy sentinel. We'll add them to our big uh, hot group. Take out their factory so they can't produce any units. And then push in a little bit more. Could probably zoom out a bit. I'm probably a little zoomed in. The more zoomed out, the better. We could see a lot more. What? Do this. Uh, a couple things I wish that were added to the game, um, kind of just speaking as an RTS. One of the things I, I can't do and I, I would like to do uh, is actually be able to A click. So uh, I can A click normally, like click on them, hit A, and then move forward. But I can't A click on the mini map. That's something I would actually really like because if I'm over here, um, maybe I can. Maybe it just wasn't working before. Let's see if they do it. Oh, you can A click on the mini map. I misunderstood. My fault. Uh, I was playing earlier and it didn't seem like it was working, but I think maybe I just was dumb. Uh, I just, oh, you know why I got confused? Because when I hover over the map with A click, there's no indication that I'm actually doing A click. I would like the indication. The other thing you can do is you can actually rotate the camera a bit, uh, but it changes like your little rotation, which isn't a big deal. Uh, but if I start dragging this around a little bit, um, it gets a little bit, it gets a little confusing. Minor though. Super, super minor argument. Alright, let's move forward a bit. Let's kind of push this up. Take out the factory. So like I said, uh, in a lot of the races actually work this way, with the exception of the Goo race, which we're not going to see, but they're not something I don't think we're going to be seeing in the campaign for a while. And they actually work pretty differently from the other two races, but a lot of the base building is this whole building on node thing. These guys, you have to build these conduits, uh, of which you can then attach buildings to. Uh, the main story race that we're playing as right now is obviously focused on building through these little hub checkpoints and stuff, which is kind of cool. Uh, but again, it's more focused on the, uh, the micromanagement and combat than it is on the macro management. Not really having to worry about, you know, constantly managing your credits, because you can actually have a barracks or a factory or whatever constantly building units for you so it really does take that weight off your shoulder it's a little bit more casual i guess which i mean depending on how you look at it can be good or bad uh for somebody who's into the, like the super hardcore rts scene it might be a, a a little bit easy for them to get into so i would suggest upping the difficulty of the game um oh my goodness i forgot there's so many over here uh but for you know somebody who's into rts's but isn't into necessarily like the uh, the really hardcore micromanagement stuff. This game, you know, kind of has you for that. It's it's definitely for a, a little bit more of a casual crowd. And I can get into that for somebody who doesn't have a lot of time, like I do, to get into the hardcore RTS scene. It's gonna be it's gonna be a little bit more uh, friendly, you know, so to speak. So let's just we're still gonna finish out this base now, and it's basically all done. I like the way these buildings die. They kind of just port away and get dissolved. I'm curious what the story behind that is and how that works. I'm assuming during the campaign we'll be allowed to play uh, all the races. And that's it. That's the first mission. So a good introduction to how the uh, how it all works. The second mission is a lot more open, so we'll be diving into the second mission next. Let's watch this first. There must be more of the silent ones. They'll attack our settlements, aren't they? They will. I'm ordering an evacuation. I need you to buy us time and hunt down those landers. Alright, cool. So thank you guys for watching for the first episode. We'll have the next one up very soon. So come back and check it out if you're more interested in a little bit more of a... Uh, 
open a mission where we get a little bit more units. But thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, consider dropping a like. Your support means the world to me. And as always, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.